What's going on everyone? Austin John Please here and today we're going to talk about some balls. Throughout Pokemon's history, there's been a very large amount of Pokeballs that have been introduced. And in this game, we have uh, an okay selection of them. And if you have the Amazon pre-order, you have two additional of some rare ones. But for the vast majority of us, we only have access to 11 balls that we can grab regularly. And today, I wanna go over all 11 of those balls and which ones you should be grabbing and which balls you should not be grabbing with consent. Once you've progressed enough in the game, you're gonna start encountering Pokemon with very, very low catch rates, including legendaries and for some reason, just some Pokemon that have very low catch rates, like Beldum. And throughout your journey, there are specific Pokeballs that are going to be available in every single Pokemon Center, Poke, Great, and Ultra. I love this thing, from the Wand Company. And then you're gonna have some Pokeballs that are gonna be more rare and have very specific use cases. I'm gonna go over those Pokeballs and exactly when you should be grabbing these balls and exactly when you should be using your balls on who? On whom? Using your balls on whom? Before the post game, and you could go to the Pokemon League and buy all the balls there, and I think they're all in Romanus Park as well. But before the post game, there's two towns you need to visit to to be able to get all of the best balls in the game. First of them is gonna be Salacion Town, that's the breeding town. And from here, well, you can always grab some Ultra Balls, Pokeballs are always classic. But the Net Balls, I definitely recommend always having some in your bag. Always buy them in multiples of 10, that way you always get the, uh, the free Premier Balls. And then also the Dusk Balls. You're gonna need a lot of Dusk Balls throughout your entire game. When you have some money, just throw it all at Dusk Balls, take my word on that. There are situations that nest balls are the best balls, but it's very few and far between. I'm gonna keep one in my inventory just because we need to talk about it later. And the other balls that we're gonna be grabbing is going to be in Canalave City. This is the town with the move deleter and the mysterious boat that we're not talking about yet. Here's going to be quick balls, which you should buy as soon as you have access to them. Always have, I don't know, a lot. A lot of quick balls. And then also timer balls. Timer balls are gonna be very situational. I recommend about 20 of them. And repeat balls are also gonna be situational. But for the Poke Radar and stuff, make sure you have, I don't know, 40 or 50 of them. Money shouldn't be a problem because I've already made my guide on how to get a whole bunch of money, right? Great. I have to go to this side of the screen. Oh, it feels weird over here. I don't like it over here. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways. Pokeballs are your base catch rate. They're an iconic Pokeball. You're probably gonna to wanna to keep on them. Great balls have almost no use in the end game. Some shinies look nice in them. Ultra balls are gonna be our base rate. Ultra balls have a base rate of times two, meaning that they're twice as powerful as Pokeballs. Great balls are one and a half times powerful as Pokeballs. Master balls are infinitely powerful, but you can only get a certain amount of them until we start exploiting how to do surprise trades and get infinite master balls. I'm gonna be making that video once version 1.2 is out, if that does bring a surprise trade. Premier balls have the exact same catch rate as Pokeballs of times one but they are cooler looking now let's get into the specialty balls these six right here are there more than i'm missing i'm missing the heel ball and the luxury ball both of them have a catch rate of times one so just the same thing as pokeballs but heel balls will heal the pokemon when you catch it yay and luxury balls double the rate in which the pokemon becomes friendly increases the friendship meter so it's good for catching things like Cleffa and Igly Buff and things like that. But outside of that, you're never gonna need them. <laughs> I'm mostly talking about catching legendary Pokemon with some honorable mentions of other things, all right? No matter what, every single Pokemon that you encounter the first turn of battle, you should be using Quick Balls. Quick Balls have a five times multiplier, but only for the first turn of battle. After the first turn of battle, they become the exact same thing as Pokeballs. So to put it in perspective, turn one of battle on a legendary Pokemon, a Quick Ball has a 5% chance to catch it, which is amazing. That's actually better than using a Dusk Ball in a cave while they're paralyzed. Not if they're on one health, only if they're on 100%. But listen, man, Quick Balls turn one, I've had that come in clutch. I think there's been a video or two of mine that I've actually done that, I've caught it on camera, and I was very happy for that. What Pokeball do you want to use after that? Well, first of all, the best ball to use is gonna be the Nest Ball, but only if the Pokemon is level one through five. Only if they're level one through five is the Nest Ball actually a good ball to use. In my opinion, the Nest Ball serves the most purpose for catching green shiny Pokemon because it has two tones of green on it, 
it's probably gonna be the only green ball you have outside of the dusk ball. Next, are you fishing or surfing? In which case you wanna use a dive ball, which is three and a half percent. However, the net ball, if the Pokemon is a water type or a bug type is also three and a half percent. And if you were to factor in the amount of Pokemon that you're going to be fishing or surfing and encountering that are not water type, it's almost completely useless. Instead, just keep net balls on your person. Because not only do they work for all those water types, but if they're bug type or even part bug type, then you're gonna have that amazing catch rate at three and a half percent. So if they're not level five or below, and if they're not a water type or a bug type, do you have it in your Pokedex already? If you do, repeat balls are the way to go. Three and a half times catch rate. It's a surefire ball. It's going to be good for if you're doing shiny chains with the Poke Radar and things like that. The repeat ball's a great ball to have on you all the time if you are doing specific things. So now we're getting out of the three and a half range and we're going to the three range. And for that, if it's not level five or below, if it's not a water type or a bug type, if it's not already registered in your Pokedex, the question is, is it nighttime in game or are you in a cave? A lot of legendary Pokemon end up being in caves and then you want the Dusk Ball. The Dusk Ball is only a three times catch rate. It's less than the other ones, but it's significantly more viable. And I keep telling you all the time to not change your clock, but if you are trying to catch a legendary Pokemon, you can change your clock to nighttime to do that encounter, you are gonna have to wait the 24 hour period for it to, you know, roll over properly. If none of that occurs, if it's not nighttime, if you're not in a cave, and if you don't wanna change your clock, then my friends, back to the Ultra Balls, back to the tried and true Ultra Balls from Gen 1. That's the reason I'm like, hey, just change your clock, and then you go from a times two catch rate with the Ultra Ball to a times three catch rate with the Dusk Ball. If you're in that sticky of a situation, that's probably what you wanna do. Everything that I said remains true until you reach turn 11 in battle. Once you reach turn 11 in battle, something changes. And then the timer ball becomes the best ball that you can use. At turn 11, it outshines every single other Pokeball at that turn level. Of course, the quick ball at turn one at 5% is magical, but after the first turn, once you're on that 11th turn, then the timer ball. If you're on the 10th turn, it's it's sort of comparable with the other ones, and if you're on the 9th turn, it's still better than the Ultra Ball, but just keep in your mind, the best one to use, turn 11, is going to be that timer ball. How do you remember that you used 10 balls already? Well, just count them up in your head. If you did your quick ball, your false swipe, your paralyzed, that's three turns, you use seven balls, boom, now you're on turn 11, done, easy. And then also just a quick mention that I wanna do as far as afflictions. There are two different tiers of status conditions that you can give wild Pokemon to increase its catch rate. What I call your permanent conditions, which include paralyze, burn, and poison. Obviously, paralyze would be the best for that because you know, it's not gonna damage the Pokemon. And then you have your short-term ones, which include frozen and sleep. At time of recording, as, as of this generation, there is no move that has a great chance to freeze a Pokemon, so that's probably not gonna be an option. If you have a Pokemon with Sing or Yawn or something else like that, or Hypnosis that can put target Pokemon to sleep, when they are asleep, they're significantly easier to catch than if they're paralyzed. Not named statuses such as confusion or infatuation do not affect a Pokemon's catch rate, but paralyze, burn, or poison, which also includes badly poison, all give you an increased catch rate of 1.35. That means it's gonna be 1.3 times easier to catch a Pokemon and whatever you're doing if you are using Paralyze on it. However, if you have a Pokemon that could put a Pokemon to sleep, instead of 1.35, it's times two. That's right, you double your catch rate if you are able to put that Pokemon to sleep. And the trade-off for that is that, you know, they're gonna wake up eventually, and then you have to put them back to sleep, so you can't just mindlessly spam balls. Because of that, a lot of people choose to do Paralyze over anything else. So turning to one of my favorite websites ever, the uh, Cave of Dragonflies Catch Rate Calculator. If you were to try to catch a legendary Pokemon, actually, let's go to Dialga, who I'm fairly certain in this game does not have a increased catch rate, unlike the legendaries of some previous games did. Instead, your box legendary, Pokemon's level doesn't matter for what we're calculating. If the Pokemon has one health, on the first turn of battle, using a quick ball, 
5.24% chance to catch it. But then you're gonna see as we go to the second turn, it plummets to less than 2%. You don't wanna use a quick ball outside of turn one, right? Dialga is not gonna be a low of a level. It's not a water or bug type. Palkia is a water type and you can use net balls on Palkia. That's actually a great thing for Palkia. If you bring it down to one health and if you're using a net ball while it is paralyzed, you have a 12% chance to catch it as opposed to a dusk ball 10% chance. But of course that 12.298% does become outshined once you get into your timer ball territory. At turn nine, we're at 12.0, turn 10, and we're kind of on par with the net ball. But as I mentioned, turn 11, boom, 13.5%. And that's a little bit better. That goes for pretty much every legendary Pokemon in the game. And also, you know, uh, some strange ones like Beldum and things like that. You can just come on here and to the Cave of Dragonflies to get an idea on the Pokemon's catch rate and figure it out from there. By the way, the catching charm increases your chance to get a critical capture done. Critical captures happen when you have a whole bunch of Pokemon already registered in the Pokedex. It's its own separate mechanic that I don't care about. I, it happens sometimes and it's cool when it does, but I don't care. Well, fantastic. You might be getting to the point in the game that you're getting legendary Pokemon, and you know what? This information is going to be a little helpful. And if you did find it helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.